Okay, the next presentation we will return to lithium niobate from a presentation by Kevin Hoisen. <laughs> That's the one, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so, my talk is going to be about uh, well, I, I worked with lithium niobate nanocrystals, and we had a bunch of different batches. Let's see if this, oh, is this on? Okay. Um, and we made a bunch of different batches of different compositions, and so I, I did uh, Raman spectroscopy. In that case, you have kind of a, an optical trap where the nanocrystals densify around the focus, and then you can uh, collect the spectra. So here's um, a typical Raman spectra for the nanocrystals. And so when you, I did peak fitting to do a sort of mode assignment using the most recent mode assignments in the literature. Um, and so there it is. If you look at, uh, if you compare the nanocrystal Raman spectra to bulk um, lithium niobate, so I have in blue, that's the Z cut near stoichiometric lithium niobate, and there's also X cut. And so you see there's this um, directional dispersion across the whole, um, across the whole region, um, and it's primarily, it's largest in here and, and here. Um, and so, uh, if you look at the directional dispersion, what it actually tells you is that these nanocrystals in the trap, they're at a variety of orientations. Uh, and so, you see, since the, um, yeah, since it, the directional dispersion is broad, um, some of the nanocrystals are, um, with Z, kind of Z-cut, and others are X-cut, so to speak. Um, so they're at a variety of different orientations of distribution. Um, but using the mode assignment and the literature, despite that distribution in nanocrystals, you can somewhat get an idea of the, the preferential alignment of the nanocrystals in the optical trap. And so maybe um, you would think the spontaneous polarization would align parallel to the polarization of the electric field of the incoming light. Um, if that was the case, you would see um, the ATO modes in the Raman spectra, but that's not the case. When you do the mode assignment, you see a lot of ETO modes, and the ATO modes are suppressed. So um, that actually leads to the conclusion that the spontaneous polarization is actually aligning itself perpendicular to the um, polarization of the electric field of the light, and that results in the decrease of the ATO modes, the presence of the ETO modes, and this is um, consistent with the work our collaborators did, um, where they basically, they put the nanocrystals in a, a capacitor and um, looked at the refractive index change and were able to extract the orientation of the nanocrystals. And so they, they noticed this as well. And this has to do with the fact that the, the induced dipole moments, um, they're, they're interacting more, most strongly uh, with the electric field, more so than the spontaneous polarization and uh, the induced dipole moments are greatest perpendicular to the spontaneous polarization. Um, so if you want to maybe get some information from the peak width, it uh, probably wouldn't be good to use a broad, um, something affected by the directional dispersion like this. You'd rather want to use something insensitive or mostly insensitive to the directional dispersion. Um, and so that's what I did. I looked at the ETO2 mode and looked at the peak width of the ETO2 mode as a function of the uh, starting lithium concentration. And so here's all the, the Raman spectra I got. So from bottom to top, uh, for, at the bottom you're in the lithium poor end, all the way up to the top you're at the lithium rich end. Um, and so you want, we wanted to see how does the, the starting lithium concentration affect the, the nanocrystal, the resulting nanocrystal stoichiometry. And if you do peak fitting, um, what you notice is there's a minimum anywhere between about 52 and 60, so on the lithium rich side, and the peak broadening uh, goes up on the lithium poor end. So this here, yeah, this is a, uh, this is the, the peak width as a function of the initial stoichiometric ratio, and this is for the ETO2 mode. And um, something I noticed as well in some of the batches um, was, were, were some extra Raman modes that you couldn't assign to lithium niobate. Uh, so I'll talk more on that. 
And um, basically what it comes down to is it, it indicates the, the presence of another phase. Um, there's these extra modes, this one at 900 inverse centimeters, um, a couple at 110, 140, 200 inverse centimeters. These are areas where you wouldn't expect um, any, any vibrational modes in lithium niobate. Um, so it, it indicates there might be another phase. And I only noticed these um, extra modes in the lithium rich end. So anything 55% and above, uh, I noticed this, the presence of this extra phase. And so at first I was thinking it was uh, possibly the, um, maybe, uh, maybe a lithium rich uh, phase that was coming out. Um, but it turns out it's actually a lithium poor phase. And if you compare uh, some of my results on top, the arrows pointing out these extra modes, um, they align well with uh, the extra modes indicated by the star uh, in the graph below. And so this group here, Bartosite et al., they uh, made uh, thin films of lithium niobate. Uh, but it turns out they were also able to make lithium poor and lithium rich thin films. And the lithium poor thin films were of this composition, LIMB308. And so these uh, extra Raman modes here align quite well with the extra Raman modes um, in their lithium poor thin films. So that led me to believe it was uh, possibly the, the, this extra phase was this lithium poor phase, which is a little counterintuitive. As I said, I only noticed this um, extra phase in the lithium rich uh, batches of nanocrystals. Anything 55% and above showed this, so a little bit counterintuitive. Um, just kind of a shallow check. Um, so the 54% um, batch I had was all lithium niobate, at least from the Raman spectra that I saw. And so I used a, uh, a femtosecond laser. I just, I deposited these nanocrystals on a, a glass slide and um, used a, a femtosecond laser at 10, uh, 26 nanometers. And so the second harmonic generation is in the green. So you can see here in the, um, for the, the pure lithium niobate uh, nanocrystal batch, then of course you see the, the green light, the green scattering. Um, but I also noticed it in this batch, which was all this lithium pore phase. Um, and I say all because I wasn't able with this batch to see the typical Raman spectra for lithium niobate. I wasn't able to find it uh, m after multiple tries. So it, it seems to be primarily this lithium pore phase. So I don't know if this is, maybe it's, maybe there is lithium niobate in there, or perhaps it's some um, surface effects. I mean, lith this lithium pore phase is uh, centrosymmetric, but these are nanocrystals, so maybe, maybe the, you, know, you break that um, symmetry at the surface and that causes the, the second harmonic generation. I didn't really look at this any further, just kind of a quick check. Um, so looking at the, the scanning electron microscope uh, images, you can see there's an improvement in the, the resulting nanocrystal um, or the, the nanocrystals that come out as you increase from the lithium poor end up to the lith uh, lithium rich side. So at first there's a lot of clumps and they're not very uniform. There's not a uniformity in size or shape. Um, as you increase, they become more uniform in size. They also become uh, spherical in shape, which is uh, interesting. And so just to summarize, um, from looking at the Raman spectra of the, the nanocrystals that I had um, that were suspended in water, I was able to um, infer the preferred orientation of the nanocrystals within the optical trap. And it seems to be that um, the spontaneous polarization is aligning itself perpendicular to the polarization of the, oh, oh, well, I really messed that one up. Um, let's see, where is it, this one? Perfect. Um, so yeah, the spontaneous polarization sets up perpendicular to the electric, the polarization of the, the light, the incoming light. Um, and that has to do with the fact that the induced dipole moments are, that are perpendicular to the spontaneous polarization are dominating in the interaction with the electric field of the light. Um, I noticed looking at this, the ETO2 mode, looking at the, the peak width um, from over all these batches, there's a minimum anywhere between about 52 and 60%. And it's um, noteworthy that the minimum 
for the nanocrystal batches lines up pretty well with the um, peak width that I got when fitting um, the ETO2 mode for near stoichiometric lithium niobate. So that's suggestive, perhaps the um, nanocrystals that came out in these batches are near stoichiometric. And um, in certain batches, you get uh, an extra phase. As I said, it was the, the lithium rich side where you notice this extra phase, and it turns out to be um, a lithium poor phase. So to sort of balance all of these things, you don't want nanocrystals from the lithium poor batches because they don't come out very well as the, uh, the microscope images showed. And you also don't want the presence of this extra phase, which is uh, centrosymmetric. So it seems like to get these stoichiometric spherical nanocrystals, um, there's kind of a happy medium around here, as far as I could see. And so that's my talk. Thanks. One or two brief questions. Try to shout. <laughs> uh, you have shown that uh, in the focus of the microscope, uh, you have the, an, a preferential alignment of the nanoparticles. Yeah. But, uh, and you attributed this to the fact that, that no, okay, now it works, <laughs> that um, you can have some surface charges. Yeah. Well, uh, I would expect from this view uh, that you can explain the fact that the particle orient in some way one with respect to each other, but I do not uh, really get why they should be oriented preferentially along one direction. I mean, there is not an applied uh, macroscopic field that can change the orientation, yes? So I, I do not understand your, your, how you, why you can uh, claim this uh, idea. Um. I guess the impression I had was um, the, the polarization of the light could act on the nanocrystals. Um, and that, that it, would, it would create these induced dipoles. And um, so that would be what was leading to the alignment. I mean, that, that's, that's sort of my idea. But you're saying you wouldn't think so, perhaps? No, no, I, ju I, just, yeah, imagine, yeah. I, just, Im I just didn't get the explanation. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. What, what I can imagine is that you, if it is like if you have some magnet, yeah, and uh, because they have a dipole, they orient in some yeah, way yeah. one to the other. But why like this and not like this, for example? This is not clear um, to me. I guess I mean well, dipoles. I I think the the preferential alignment is parallel to whatever the field is. Um, so that that would be why. Um, so there there would be different dipoles competing. Mm -hmm. um, for one, there's, yeah, there is the spontaneous, the dipole from the spontaneous polarization, but there's also induced dipoles that are parallel to the spontaneous polarization and perpendicular. But mm -hmm. the ones that are perpendicular um, are stronger, um, and so they would dominate the interaction with the electric field. So that would be kind of where the alignment comes from. Okay. That's Thank my you. best guess, yeah. Thank you. Sure. I think if, if you want to, another question for the speaker, please find him at the wine tasting. We don't want to be late. So maybe to get us back yeah, on you schedule, can, you can find let's, me there. let's uh, thank the speaker again for an interesting presentation.